today's lecture, I'm going to start uh, working on the whiteboard because I want to show you a few important aspects. And although we call it uh, medium rise, I'm going to start with the low rise, five story. And how to think about a five story building? Then I will extend into a 10 story building. And then I will extend into a 20 story building. So today we'll cover whatever we can. And the remaining part we will continue uh, next week, <laughs> uh, Tuesday. You see, what is the day, uh, Manjula? Uh, today is 22nd, 29th. Today is 20. First, so 28th, we will have a lecture, is that right? Yeah, we can have a lecture. We can have a lecture, 28th. So we are going to have another. So repeat of the, you know, the, the continuation of today's lecture will be on 28th. Because we are planning to have it every week so that you will get a good continuation. So I'm going to now shift the screen to whiteboard. So you have to excuse us for one or two minutes until we change from uh, computer screen to whiteboard. So today, now we'll adjust the board as I write, uh, we'll make some small adjustment so that we can see it. I'm going to take a small building, a common building. In this building, we'll have uh, grid lines, one, two, so we say, eight. Three, four, five. And this direction, uh, can you see it? Distance will be six meters. All this will be six meters. And this is 7.5 meters. So we are going to have a grid this way, A, B, C, D, E, F. So let's assume that in this building, This elevation, I'll draw a small elevation, not the exact one, just to save the space for other things. We are going to have ground floor first, second, third, fourth, roof. Roof is also a flat roof. The so foundations will be like this. So the floor to floor height here will be 4 meters, all the other floors 3.6 meters. So, first thing I'm going to show you is how to select the general, how to do the general ring. For this building. As you can see, it's a simple building. It's a very simple building. And I'm going to show you how to do the general arrangement for this building. So let's see what are the special features. At the ground floor, you can see there's a four meter height. But we like to have the same height for all the floors. So how do you ensure that we, we maintain the same height? We can introduce the ground view. 
You can introduce the ground B. Now, this introducing ground beam is common for low rise, medium rise, all. So we will introduce the ground beam. The moment you introduce the ground beam, what is the flow to flow height? 3.6 meters. So all the flows will have a flow to flow height of 3.6 meters. Manjula, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear very well. Very well, right? Right. So now, so basically, now uh, you can see, you can see that uh, blue color, the acceleration, that uh, flow to height is now maintained at 3.6 meters. Now, we have to see, there are two options for this building. It's a five-story building. Five story building means we have a lift. So if you are going to have a lift here, I'm just dot, drawing it with dotted line, two lifts. Now you can see the lifts are not symmetrical. If the lifts are not symmetrical, what is the way you can have the lift? Because you are going to have only two lifts. And we might have a staircase scene. So when you are arranging, uh, if you are going to have concrete walls, it will be costly. So one of the options available is to have four columns. Only at the corners, you will have some columns. And rest, you can fill it with basin. That means we are not going to have a concrete wall in this building. It's a five-story building, no concrete walls. It's possible. If it's a five-story building, no concrete walls. If you have a five-story building, no concrete walls. What can you say? You say it's an unbraced building. Unbraced. Unbraced, which means lateral loads. Resistance by whom? The frame. Frame resists the lateral loads. Frame resists the lateral loads. So, if the frame is resisting the lateral loads, it's an unbraced frame. What is the difference between a brace frame and an unbraced frame? If you take a column in the brace frame, the column buckles like this. In the unbraced frame, the column buckles like this. There's a movement delta. With an unbraced frame, there's a movement at the top of the column. So the Column will be look, will look like this. It will look like this. Whereas if it is if it is is braced, it will look like this. No, no significant movement at the top of the column. But if it is unbraced, we can have a significant movement at the top of the column. So you can see unbraced can buckle easily. It can buckle easily, whereas it is more stable. So, what do you like? Brace or unbraced? We say we like braced. But if you are not going to have a lift core, we are having unbraced situation. So, we have unbraced column. Now, we want to select the column sizes, beam sizes, and the slab thickness. So if the slab is 7.5 meter by 6 meter, what is the thickness of the slab? It's a massive slab. The slab thickness will be about 175 to 200 millimeters. What can you say about the reinforcement requirement? Reinforcement requirement can be either T10 or T12 at 150 centimeters. T10 or T12 at 
150 cm center depending on the load, depending on the load. Slab thickness is 170 cm. What can you say about the cost? Cost is high. So how do you reduce the cost? We'll have second wheels. We'll have second wheels. We'll have two wheels like that. Now what happens? Now what happens is the inline patterns will be like this. All these nodes will come here. All these nodes will come here like this. Now you can see. Now, if you go for with this option, what is the thickness of the slab? 125 meters. What is saving in the slab thickness? 50 millimeters. What is saving in the reinforcement? Now we need T, T, T Taylor 250. We need T Taylor 250 cm. Huge saving in reinforcement. So we prefer when the spans are more than 5 meters, it's worth considering the option of dividing the slab by using second degrees. Dividing the slabs by using second degrees. Then I have asked the question. How do you design the second beams? How do you design the second beams? We design second beams so that they are simply supported. So what is the difference between a simply supported beam and a continuous beam? Simply supported beam, what is the reinforcement that we provide at the top? 2T12. No need to provide any 16 millimeter bars or 20 millimeter bars. Why? It is simply supported. What is the reinforcement that you get at the bottom? 2T16, and then you get additional reinforcement to carry rather 2T16 or 2T20 or whatever. You get additional reinforcement to carry the additional elements. Additional reinforcement. But, but the most important thing is. What is the vending moment you saw designed? WL squared over it. Because secondary beams must be designed as simply supported. Secondary beams must be designed as simply supported. Is that clear? Modular? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir, yes, clear. Yes, so you can see, we can make a significant saving. By going with second beams, where the second beams are designed as simply supported, whether it's Euro code or British code, still the second beams are designed as simply supported. What is the reason for that? Now you can see here we get a second beam. The second beam supported by which beam? The H beam. The H beam. If you provide if you consider second beam is continuous, what will happen? This H beam will be subjected to torsion, to twist. Why? You have a beam, and that beam is bending like this. What will happen to this beam? This beam will rotate. What will happen if the beam rotates? It cracks. So you must make sure the reinforcement in the second beam is 2T12. 2T12. No, not enough fixity to rotate the HB. But we, are, we have to be concerned about this. There's, a, there's some kind of fixity. So what is the preferred width for this HB? 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter. What is the preferred width for this B? 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter, you know, the torsional capacity of a beam depends on the width, the minimum dimension. So if it, is, if it depends on the minimum dimension, which is more preferable? The preferable width will be 300, it's not 200. So 200 you might, you might, you can manage, but don't use 200, use 300. Why? 
There's a possibility of transferring a small moment at the second place. Small moment, not a big moment, very small moment. So if you use 300 millimeter heat, then you are better off. You can resist torsion better. You can resist torsion better. Is that clear? I'm, I'm just trying to tell you how to select the, the member sizes with some logic behind it. Is that clear, Manju? Yes, yes. It's clear. Right? We are not blindly selecting. We are not looking at another structure and selecting. We have a reason for selecting every dimension. So now we have a second beam. Design has simply supported 2T12 at the top so that it will not cause any torsion on the primary beams. Primary beams. In the middle here, no problem. Why? There will be another beam on the other side. We'll have another beam running here. So there's no chance for torsion. Whereas the H beam, though it's loaded less, still we select a reasonable thickness because it gives us a reasonable value for torsional resistance. Now we have a structure. We know the slab thickness. It can be either 275, 180 millimeters with no second beam. So you can go with a slab where you have 125 millimeter thickness, very much less steel and more economical. Because beams are very efficient in carrying flexure. So we have deep beam, much, much less self weight. So the Second beam plus 125 millimeter thick slab can be much more economical than having a 200 millimeter or 175 millimeters. So that is the first lesson we can learn, which means we must do something to optimize the slabs. And if we can reduce the slab thickness even further, it's better. But you know, when you are reducing the slab thickness a lot. We run into problems. So with that, we get uh, an important question. Whether we need grade 30, 25 or 30, or 25 megapascal concrete, or 25 newtons per milliliter squared concrete, or 30. What is your preference? I mean, there's no, no need to go for 30. If you can manage it 25, no harm in managing it 25. But when you go for 30, especially when you are using the Euro code, you can get some advantage with the cover. You can gain some advantage with the cover. So it's up to you. If I select grade 30, the reason is the cost difference between grade 25 concrete and 30 concrete. What is the cost difference? 500 rupees, 500 rupees. Grade 25 and grade 30 concrete, the cost difference can be 500, 500 to 750 rupees. So, is it worth going for grade 30? Yes, you might say, yeah, it's worth. Think about grade 30. Why? You get a, a stronger building and a more durable building. You get a stronger building and a more durable building. Is it clear up now? Yes. So now we have beams. We have to select the beams. Now you can see we are talking about six meters and seven point five meters. But there's a rule for all the buildings. What is the rule? Maximum depth. Any problem? Increase the you can't manage it a normal width of two fifty or three hundred. Then will you increase the depth of width? We increase the width. Why? The reason is 
when you have a building, generally we need to have a floor to floor clearance of three, close to three meters. And then we need something like 0.3 meters minimum for 32 and 7 meters. You see, 0.3 meters minimum for the air condition in ducts. And below that, we get the beams and the slab. Overall thickness, 0.6 meters. If you go beyond 0.6 meters, we'll have to increase the floor to floor height. We have to increase the floor to floor height. Five story building, the penalty is not very much. But it's a tall building, the penalty can be about two to three floors. Extra facade, just because you have selected a beam of depth greater than 0.6 meters. Then you'll ask why this basic number 0.6 meters. The 0.6 meter deep beams are fairly robust. Fairly robust. They are strong beams, strong beams. So because of that reason, we select 0.6 meters. So if you look at this, this particular beam will have a concentrated load here and then very small loads here. Not very heavily loaded. So what is the thickness, what is the width you select? I might select 300 millimeters. And I do not like 250 very much because you have to, you can, when you are placing the reinforcement and uh, and then doing the concreting, you might find the space is little congested. So if I can go for 300 millimeter width, I would, I would prefer that. And then you want to look at this side. What is the span? 7.5 meters. And you can see more load is coming. Capacity load, more load is coming. And then there's another concentrated load. The concentrated. So what do you like? 300 or 400? I prefer 350 or 400. Why? The reason is this beam can, is having a greater span. It carries more load. High load means more shear. If you're having more shear, what do you like? A very small cross-section or reason large cross-section. You like a reasonably large cross-section. So also we select 300 millimeter for this beam on grid day. For the beam on grid one, I might select 350 or 400. 350 or 400. So when I say these rules, these are, these are the kind of thing you can use for medium rise and high rise buildings as well. Because when it comes to slab, the slab in a two story house and slab in a 50 story building, will there be any difference? No, same slab. But the risk, risk is much higher in the tall building. So because of that, we have to have a logical reasoning for selecting each and every parameter. We should, we need a logical reasoning to select each and every parameter. Is that clear? Any questions? Just one question in the chat box. Yeah, what is the question? Can't we consider long secondary beams as continuous beams? That's one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are considering uh, the primary beams as uh, primary beams as continuous beams. Second beams we detail as simply supported, whatever the condition, because there will be a deflection at the middle of a beam, though it's continuous. It is continuous, but the primary beam is going to deflect at the center. So if the primary beam is deflecting, can you design it as a continuous beam? The answer is no. You should not design it as a continuous beam. You must design it as a simply supported beam. Even if it is continuous, still we design it as a simply supported beam. <coughs> is that clear? Uh, is that clear? Engineer Vajula? 
Yes, another question, sir. The depth, what is the question? About the depth, you better uh, read the question. What about the depth of the secondary waves? How it is selected? A depth of the secondary. Good question. Because, you know, now we know uh, we are having uh, 600 millimeter depth. So if we use 600 millimeter for secondary beam, what will happen? We have to crank the reinforcement because reinforcement, bottom reinforcement is clashing. So what is the preferred depth for Second beam, 500 or 550. Never use 600. Never ever use 600 because you will have a lot of extra work at the same time. The moment you select 500 or 550, automatically the reinforcement will go one layer above and that will not create any clashes, no cranking, very easy to fix the reinforcement. The depth of the second beam is 500 or 550. How about the width? You might use a width like 250. You might use a width like 250. Because 200 is really difficult to fill the concrete. It's not that easy. You have to order little flowing concrete. So better to go with 250 as the width of the second. Have I answered the question? Uh, I have a uh, question to addition, same yeah. question. Uh, can we use hidden beam uh, for secondary? Uh, instead of providing a larger depth, uh, can we increase the width and use that, that beam as a hidden beam? Yeah, actually, why do you want to hide it? Because uh, when you use uh, this type of arrangement, it might be cheaper to have, a, unless you, you know, whether you try to hide or not, secondary beam can be seen. So if you don't like beam seen, have a seat. Because anyway, all these buildings, 2.7 meter, we'll have a ceiling. So why do you want to hide anything? Anything about the ceiling, no need to hide. So because we are in beam system, we are in services, we need to have a ceiling. The ceiling will be at 2.7 meters. So we are not going to gain anything by doing, uh, you select me something shallow as the second. Select something as deep as possible, but whether it's 500 or 550, that's your choice. You will draw the reinforcement arrangement, cover all these parameters and decide. Generally, 550 works, but if you want, you can use 500. Have I answered the question? No winding going for shallow ones because shallow beams are inefficient. Shallow beams are inefficient. The whole idea of second beam is to have an efficient arrangement so that we can minimize the reinforcement in the second beam. In doing so, we can minimize the total reinforcement quantity for this particular side. Any other question? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, when uh, two secondary beam intersecting at the point, uh, will that uh, those two are in the uh, same depth or any stiffness yeah, ratio? Yeah, you can, you can, you can use, uh, for, in 7.5 meter direction, you can use 550. In the 600, 6 meter uh, direction, you can use 500. That way you can make sure no clash. So in the 6 meter direction, 500. 7.5 meter direction, 550. So that way you can ensure, because we are covering all this by using a ceiling. So whatever you do above that, no matter. So you can use, you can ensure the reinforcement can be fixed without cracking. And that is very valuable. So excuse me, sir. May I ask yeah. a question? Yeah. Sir, so some architects, they request uh, put a slab or hidden beam into the slab. Uh, then that is for houses. But, is that I don't for yes, yes, houses. Sir. Then can we design yeah. that hidden or slab beams as a beam, uh, conventional beam, or are the beams taking actual beam actions? No, no, you have to use uh, there's a method called Hills, Hillsborough strip method. Uh -huh. So when, okay. when they ask for steps, slab beams, you uh -huh. have to use Hillsborough strip method and design the reinforcement, and you can learn about Hillsborough strip method uh, by using the book by McGinley. Not I'm making I'm making the book. Also, right. Bangin, you have it and also uh, Muslim Bangi book. A Muslim Bangi, book okay. As that, as that method. So it's, it's a matter, matter, method of selecting a width 
particular width for the beam, and then concentrate in lot of reinforcement within the beam so that the beam, beam itself can the strap itself can carry higher mode. Uh, so it's a parasitic method. You can design steps by using that method. Okay, okay. Right. So just read. Uh, you can uh, you want on the web. You, sometimes you can download these books. So find a hard copy or a soft copy. Just go through the Hispara strip method and uh, book by Mosley and Banji has uh, covers that sufficiently well. And I think the Magellan's book also has uh, the same uh, same kind of coverage. Okay. Okay, sir. So Agnes, don't ask this kind of uh, special request in uh, buildings. All these come in houses. So if it is the case in house, you can use another method. What is that method? Use a hundred millimeter beam, steel beam, hidden inside the slab. Will it work? Yeah, it will work well. You have a 150 millimeter slab and you put a hundred millimeter, one or two beams inside the slab, and the beams are designed to carry the load. Composite action. So then uh, how to provide the reinforcement? Reinforcement, because you have a hundred and fifty slab and you are having only hundred hundred millimeter uh, uh, what do you call hundred millimeter. Uh, beep. Beep. So you can uh, you can run a immediate bus uh, about the about it so that you get 15 meter cover and 15 meter cover at a special location. If you are using 30 uh, 30 megapascal concrete, it will be sufficient. If you are using 30 megapascal, if you are using 25, may not be sufficient. Or oh, otherwise, you select the slab thickness of 160. So if you say of 160, then you will find that the cover is sufficient. How is sufficient? Because we are talking about a house, 30, 30 megapascal concrete, very mild exposure conditions. <coughs> so the house <laughs> yes, last only about 100 years. Because after about 100 years, there will be enough people who want to do something else. So generally we like something like 100 year lifespan. And that can be obtained by using the 30 megapascal. Uh, sir, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, if we just use uh, one uh, second beam uh, in this particular example, it yes. divides six meter span into two. And uh, yeah. is it work? We can design them yeah, as one. You want you can do that, but then, then the problem is. The slabs will become one way. The reinforcement spacing has, should be re reduced to 200 centimeters. Then the one way span is absolutely to T10 at 200. So you can see you are you are you need more reinforcement. So two way is very 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 efficient. So I prefer going with two way rather than one way. But uh, dividing only in one direction is possible. It's very much possible. In that case, you might say, I'm going to divide it like this. And instead of all these traps, what I'm going to do? I'm going to have nerd beams, nerd system, where you get beams like this, supported at 1.45 meter interval with a thin slab of 60 millimeters. You might do that. And these days it's a very efficient system. Why? Three meter, so you can have, instead of using the minimum depth of the beam, you might use a slightly greater width, greater depth for the nerd beam. What will happen? It will be very stiff, and the resulting system can be very efficient. Very efficient. So, one of the options that is available. In the present context, where the reinforcement is very expensive, 
The concrete is also becoming expensive because of shortage of cement. And sand is already very expensive. Going with nerd system as a one way step system can be very efficient and cost effective. And you might be able to reduce the total overall cost of the project by 30 by adopting these steps over and over again. Sir, excuse me, sir. Yeah. So, if the, for example, for the balconies, the slab is cantilever by, say, four feet. Yeah. Uh, now, now we are providing a, uh, two beams at the two corners, two edges. Mm -hmm. Then, can we design that slab as a simply supported slab, which is supported on the two beams? That we are providing the bottom reinforcement a perpendicular to the two beams. Is it okay? So, basically, what you are saying is, uh, slab will look like this. You are continuing the beam. Yeah. Yeah, but we are not providing the beams along the longitudinal direction, only the short, uh, shortest direction. Uh, that is not a very good arrangement because although you provided the, the, the middle part of the slab will be like as a cantilever. This part uh, middle of the part. slab will be like as a cantilever. So if you are doing uh, that, put a small beam on the edge. Put a small beam edges. on the edge. Uh. Then it will be safe. Otherwise, you have to design it as a cantilever. cantilever. Not like, not as a simple support. It's wrong to design it as simple support because it's very, very unlikely that it will behave as a simple support or span in this way. No. Very unlikely. It will always, the centre part will try to behave as a cantilever. So, don't do that. If you are going with, if you are relying, we're going to rely on these means, Put an additional beam along the edge so that you will have a stiff, very stiff, very strong cantilever. Very strong. Basically, it's not a cantilever. It's a, it's a cantilever with beams. Slab is just sitting on the beams. Even if you don't try to enforce with this slab, will sit on it because because there will be arching action. So they will not be able to. So you can provide the nominal reinforcement in there. Yeah. Any other question? So uh, when we uh, model a building, the you know, heat up so sub two thousand. Yeah. Now, uh, for example, moment is coming around uh, for the columns ten or five. Yeah. But the code says that we have to take a minimum moment of a uh, uh, axial load into zero point zero two times. Uh, yes, I think that's right. That's right. Then, uh, what is the correct uh, answer? That we should take the mini code that when we take the values from the code, sometimes probably higher than the eight ups movement. Yeah, yeah, take it from the code, like the, you have to use the minimum. Minimum, okay. Minimum extensity, minimum extensity. The, the minimum extensity for the load yes. should be used. Yes, right. So, I'm uh, now you are convinced how to handle the slab and the beam. And for every reason, you have a logical reason. Not just looking at another structure, you are assuming we have reason to select the width, we have reason to select the depth. Then what is left? Column. So what is the size of the column? Three fifty by three fifty. Four hundred by four hundred. 450 by 450, 500 by 500, 600 by 600. What is size of the column? Any guess? Five-story building. What is size of the column? How do you find size of the column? We forget about all these lifts and all that. We say we find the load on this area. We find the load on the tributary area, center to center. Whatever the way we use it, all these loads will finally come onto this column. And we say self-rate, we can calculate 
you can calculate the finishes, partitions, impulse load, impulse load reduction. All parameters are known. Then it's a matter, it's very easy. You know the load on the pump. Sometimes you might increase it by about 10% to allow for all these uh, pattern loading and all any kind of thing. Now you know the maximum load of the column. So these days we have to move to Euro codes, but I'm sure most of you are familiar with British codes. British codes are very simple but restricted. Euro codes are more complicated, but you can do many things very flexible. So, because of that reason, I prefer Euro codes. I used to I used British codes a lot, but these days I prefer Euro codes. Why? Euro codes are really good. You can stretch things to the limit. Why do you have to stretch things to the limit? You don't have resources. Resources are very expensive. So I must minimize the use of resources. How do you minimize the use of resources? And that is by using good quality materials, which are strong. And for that purpose, you know about some it. But when you are trying to find the size of the column, you don't have to worry too much. You can find it by using the British code, simple rules. There are equations in the British code, which says, if it is a column, N is equal to 0.45 FCU AC plus 0.87 FY AC. This is a steel area, this is a concrete area. There's an equation like that, given in the code. Then there's another equation, N is equal to 0.4 FCU AC plus 0.75 FY AC. Then there's another equation, N is equal to 0.35 FCU AC plus 0.67 FY AC. There are rules, the equations. And if the column is subjected to some moments, what is the equation recommended in BS 8110? The last equation. The last equation is the one that is recommended in BS 8110. Now let's see. We know the load. You can calculate the load. Then you can calculate the column. And the most likely case is the column size will be one of these. Column size will be 400 by 400 or 450 by 450. Very unlikely that you need anything bigger than that for a five story. For a five story building, 400 by 400 column would be quite sufficient. But now we remove the shear, shear walls, no concrete walls, only few columns around the lift core. Who is carrying all the record loads? The frame is carrying all the record loads. If the frame is carrying all the record loads, what will happen to the frame? It is going to behave like this, or it can go into a behavior like this. So what is the most likely deformation of the frame? First one A or B. The most likely deformation of the column is B. Because there can be relative movement between the bottom of the column and the top of the column due to the windows. So because of that, we have to consider it's unpressed and unpressed column what is the effective height? Can be about 1.2 times clear height. Now the clear height is 
3.6 into 1.2. Can somebody give the answer? 3.6 into 1.2. But you can see it's not 3.6. The height is 3 meters. 3 meters into 1.2. 3.6 meters. 3.6 meters. 3.6 meters. And divided by 500. Answer is about 7.2. And we know it's a, if you want to design it as a short column, short column, the ratio should be less than 10. The ratio should be less than 10. Effective height divided by the minimum duration, the applicable duration should be less than 10. Now let's see if you say 500 by 500, you can satisfy. But if I'm designing this five-story building, the size of the column I select will be one of these. The last one. I will not select 400 by 400 or 450 by 450. I select 500 by 500 or 600 by 600. And you might say it's a waste of material. I would say it's not. Because if you consider the Material usage, the most of the material goes into the slab, a significant quantity of material will go into the beams, and columns will consume the least amount of material. So, if you increase the size of the columns slightly, it's not going to give you a big penalty, give you a small penalty. But there's a big advantage of going for 600 by 600 columns. What is the advantage? If there's an earthquake, I'll take a small frame where, where the hinges can occur, hinges can occur at all these places. But we know all these hinges will occur in the weaker environment. And we like the hinges forming in the beam, not in the column. So if I want to make sure hinges form in the column, I must make sure column is bigger than the beam. And in, because of that reason, I would say, I prefer 600 by 600. 600 by 600 column. And the building will look very strong, but after the earthquake, it will be one of the structures that are standing there. Whereas your optimized structures might not be there. And what do you have? What have you optimized? Column, which is consuming the least amount of reinforcement you have optimized. And that structure may not be there. So can you see the logic, Mandula? Yes, we can. Because we should not think about the code. Code allows us all these equations. We can do calculations, but we must look at the big picture. We must look at the big picture. So when you look at the big picture, we do not like hinges forming in the column. We like hinges forming in the big. So make sure column is bigger than the B. And I might say use the same column size of all the full height because change in the size of the formwork also will be possible. Then how do you provide reinforcement in the co column? How to provide reinforcement in the column? We will not provide six, eight, six bars. We'll provide something like 12 millimeter reinforcement, but we'll provide nine bars. Then we can go for a link like this. And we'll go for another link like this.
And what is the size of the link? TH. Never use R or minus T in the column links because minus T cannot provide sufficient confinement in case of an earthquake. Then you are to ask the question can earthquake sit Sri Lanka? Unfortunately, answer is yes. Answer is yes, but not very really high magnitude, but magnitudes up to about six on Richter scale is a possibility. Because these structures are designed to last 100 years or more than that, no point in taking a risk thing, no earthquake will hit this structure. Let's take some precaution. Precaution is we select it in such a way that it's not going to collapse in an earthquake. Can you understand the reinforcement array? I'm not selecting very large vertical reinforcement, but I'm more concerned about the confinement. So because of that reason, at the top of the column, I might say that T8 at 100. Middle part, not a big problem. I might select T8 at 100. Okay, bottom, T8 at 100. And there might someone might say T8 at 75. If you want, you can have it. But uh, Having too much reinforcement is a, sometimes it's a nuisance when you try to do concrete. So I prefer some gap like 100 millimeters or no honeycombs will ever work. Convection can be done very well. Because we are using D8, we are taking a precaution. So because all these rules are based on laboratory experiments. Very few are based on real size buildings. But you can see every 100 millimeter, we have two links. So that is providing significant confinement to combat. And we are expecting very low magnitude earthquakes, like earthquakes of magnitude less than six. So, because of that reason, you can say this kind of detail would be sufficient. And if you want to be more conservative, we might select T8 at seven, T8 at seven. But again, you have to see when you are going with zero code, T is replaced by H. We call it hot roll bus, hot roll bus, or QT bus, or Q. QT bus or QST bus. So the industry it is either called QST bus or QT bus. Quenched self tempered. Quenched self tempered is QST. The short form is QT bus. Quenched and tempered bus. Quenched and tempered bus. The where the reinforcement works is when the reinforcement is very cool, very warm, we spray water onto it so that it, it will melt, it will solidify suddenly while the middle is still rotted, red hot, and then it will it will relieve some of the stressors, and we get a strong reinforcement that is strong on the skin. Soft in the middle, soft in the middle, strong in the skin. Because strong in the skin, you can bend it easily, rebend it. It nothing will happen because middle is very soft. Middle is like my steel, out is like high high tensile. So the flexibility of the reinforcement is very high. When you do a bend test, yes. Very little chance it will fail. You always pass. Why it's a flexible reinforcement. And that is the modern manufacturing method for reinforcement. Modern manufacturing method for reinforcement.
So I have told you about reinforcement. Why we should use T or H bars rather than my steel. My steel cannot provide lateral confinement. Okay. So if you want an earthquake resistant structure, never use my steel. Use raw steel or high strength steel or hot roll bars for links. Quality. Is that all clear? Is that all clear? Excuse me, I want to know how. Yes, to yes, 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 it's clear. Very clear. No, how to you want to know how to? With beam. With the beam. Depth. Not depth. With the beam. With the beam, I explain you. With the beam, will depend. the minimum width is the. I, the for main beams, I prefer a minimum width of 300 millimeters. I'm going to get a lot of reinforcement so I can easily fix the reinforcement. Yeah. Whereas uh, for second degrees, I, 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 I'm okay with 250 millimeters. 250. And then I told you why I'm having H beams which are supporting second beams. I would again prefer a thickness like 300, 350 than 200. You want to might do the job carrying the load, but it's a weak beam. So I like a stronger beam. That's the H beam. Have I answered your question? Okay. Thank you. Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Yeah? So for the medium rise building, for example, uh, two, uh, three, four stories, if the, it is not uh, in, in a earthquake zone, yeah. right? Uh, then uh, for the uh, for a commercial building, can't we use the R6 for the columns according to the code? We, oh, we calculate that one. Because no way in the world you can see it. It's earthquake free. Every zone, every plate can have faults. So because of that, no way in the world you can give a guarantee no things. So because of that reason, make sure you use the and this use of T8 will encourage manufacturers to manufacture T8 so that it will be available, readily available in the market. T8 is a very, very economical reinforcement because you get 400 bars, minimum 400 bars per ton. So, whereas you get only about 280 bars per ton for 10 and 180 bars per ton. Uh, for 12 millimeters. So don't think D8 is an expensive reinforcement. It's not. D8 is a is a is a very good reinforcement that can be used easily used for many applications. T10 is too much. T10 is too much. For small buildings, T10 is too much. But for large buildings, we use it. Now I have got the slabs and all. And how about the roof slab? You are going to the same system, but the slab thickness you will increase to 150 millimeters. Why? In the roof slab, we will provide some additional nominal reinforcement within the slab top to ensure that the crack pitch will remain as low as possible so that the roof slab will not leak. So have I asked, is it clear? We need two bats of reinforcement and the additional reinforcement can be out of T8. Additional top layer of reinforcement can be out of T8. Any questions? So you have one question. Yeah. Uh, sir, regard the, for the QST bars, uh, if we make yeah. uh, threads 
for the couplers, uh, will yes. it have affected the strong area of the bar? Is it affected the? Yeah, it, uh, it can it can affect the strong area to a little extent. But uh, you are using couplers to couple compression bars, aren't you? The using coupler not is a is a coupler is a tension coupler or a compression coupler. Tension coupler, sir. Why do you get tension coupler in a collar? In the column, all the couplers will be compression couplers. So the reduction in area will not affect very much because the coupler will have additional. Area. Now you have to ask. Uh, sir, I have another question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's related to the beam detailing. Uh, yeah. Let's say if you are using a 300 mm width of a beam, what is yeah. the recommended uh, minimum width of the uh, transverse uh, spacing of the longitudinal bar? Let's say if, if it is 300 width, can we provide. The, 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 the minimum rule is 25. The aggregate size, maximum aggregate size was 5 mm. But I prefer something like 40 mm minimum. Not I, the reason. I, then I, I can I, use I, a 25 millimeter vibrator and vib send the vibrator through the, the between the bars, I can send a vibrator. Yeah, Did that's okay, the but uh, I am asking the uh, the maximum spacing, sorry, maximum spacing. Can we can we stick to two bars or do we need to provide uh, uh, do we need three to keep bars. the rebar within uh, uh, yeah, actually, less than 150? If you look at the maximum distance rules, even in Euro code, they are very comprehensive. So because of that, I always prefer using three bars of smaller diameter than using two bars of large diameter. Okay. The, Thank you. the closer the reinforcement, you will not get any cut problems. But if you try to minimize the reinforcement, number of reinforcement by using large diameter bars, you are generally asking for money. So my rule is more of small diameter bars satisfy the area. Now I can, can I ask you a question? Which equation you use to calculate the size of the minimum size of the column needed? Equation one, two, or three. All the equations are given in BS. Equation one, two, or three. We use equation number two. Why? In a multi-story building, the axial load dominates. Bending moments are very small because of that reason. Use of equation number two can give a better answer than the use of equation number three. So we can always use equation number two because the moment transferred by the beams is very small. The moment transfer by the beam is very small. Because of that reason, we can always go with second equation. Is that clear? Manjula? Yes. Any other question you have? Because I'm going to touch on foundations. Touch on foundations. Sir, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so, can we use a T type L T or cross type uh, column in lieu of yes, of course, column? of course. Uh, you know, if if I am uh, if I do, do not like designing this as unbased structure, and if the architect allows, I'll go for a column like that. What is the purpose of that column? That column is the whole this direction. Can the building move? Can the building move? The movement of the building can be less restricted by the column. So can this type of column fail? No way. Why? It is restrained. One, one wing is restraining the other wing. Or one leg is restraining the other leg. So it did not buckle off it. Because it is L shaped. 
Are you using this L shape at four corners? Will I get a brace building or an unbrace building? I'll get a brace building. If I have a brace building, then, uh, then you, you don't have to worry even about earthquakes. You don't have to worry about earthquakes. Why? Because all the earthquake loads will now be taken by the walls, not by the corners. So the structure will not, very little chance for structure to suffer any damage because however the earthquake tries, the building does not move very much. Is that clear? Yeah. That's another option. Rather than going with the brace building, unbrace building, you can go with the brace building, prior to the architect allow you to have some walls on the outer building. Is that clear? Now yes, the foundation. Yes, yes. of this H, <coughs> H columns are decided. So these H columns? Yes. These ones, Major? Yes, sir. Yes. You can decide uh, as a wall. If the length of the wall is, uh, length, of, length, of, length is more than four times the width, it's a wall. You are designed as a wall. Later, later, I will show you how to design a wall. Okay? Next week, I will show you how to design a wall if, if time permits. But uh, I am just trying to give you an overview how to deal with different situations by having some idea about the big picture. Some idea about the big picture. I am not interested in all the numbers in quotes and all the equations in the quotes because I like to see how the structure is going to behave it only is subject to vertical loads and lateral loads. I'm looking at the big picture. I'm not interested in individual elements. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, what would be the uh, uh, sizes of the that uh, edge column, sir? That L shaped column? L shaped one, I would select uh, a width of 225. Very easy to cast. 200 is possible, 225. This way, I might say 1.2 meter. 1 meter, 1.2 meter. Your 1 meter is enough. And then you design it as a wall, not, not as a column. And 1 meter column, 1.2 oh, 1, 1. meter wall is sufficient to give stability to the structure. And structure will become very strong. Very strong. No, you need not worry about the earthquake because it's a strong structure. But you have to make sure foundation is also strong. It's a five story building. I will not go with individual footings. I might put an inverted T type formation. I might put an inverted T type formation. And the advantage of inverted D type foundation is differential settlements will not have any effect because differential settlements are all well looked after. And what is the shape of the inverted T? And the depth will depend on the type of loading and the soil condition. If soil conditions are weaker, we go for a greater depth because we might have to balance the situation by having a stiff beam. Whereas if you have good sandy soils or laterite soils, you might consider a reasonable depth, not a very high depth. So the depth of that inority can be about one meter or 800 millimeter or whatever. But inorities are very efficient structures because even when you have a width of two meter, the thickness here can be 300 millimeter. No need to have anything more than 300 millimeters. Even when the width of the width of the base is two meters, width of the base is two meters, width of the base is wide, two meters, still 300 millimeters would be sufficient to prevent the shear failure while providing adequate flexion. And the reinforcement can be heated at 200 or 150. 
or T12 at 200, something like that. Very small quantity of electrons. Very efficient system. How about the robustness of the building? Very robust, not like individual patterns. You can take external shocks very well. And then you might consider connecting this if you want with the ground beam so that the foundations are connected in every direction. Very strong foundation. And then you might consider having a ground set also if the soil conditions are weak, supported on the foundation rather than so, so that the moment you have a foundation Grounds have supported on the foundation, the structure will become very stiff at that level, which is very useful if you are uh, constructing on a weak soil conditions. And the drive is 825. Uh, shall I stop here because I have covered all different aspects of the building? Very low, it's not a big building, five story building. But I have covered many aspects that you might often all. And you might always try to optimize it columns, but I never optimize columns. I always optimize steps. Because anything you say in the step is repeated five times. So there's no point in, and step consumes the maximum amount. So I might consider things like nodes, beam system. Beam slab system, T cost, and in situ cost. In preference to reinforced concrete systems without beam, secondary wheels, or with secondary wheels, or it can go even further. And you might consider pre stress concrete, pre stress concrete steps. No beams at all. In a later day, I'll show you how to design. Where was concrete steps? At least how to think about design. And then, because if you go with PT, there are many advantages. And we are lucky because the best, the company ranked the best in Singapore. Not one of the best, the best in Singapore. Or the biggest in Singapore is very active in Sri Lanka. And that is called Utah. Very active in Sri Lanka. So you, have, you can easily go with it in even in small buildings. Okay. Manjula, shall we wind up the lecture? Uh, yes. Uh, so excuse me. We can wind up if any questions uh, to. Yes, uh, but I can take one or two questions more. Give so me more time. Me. <clears throat> yes. Uh, if we are uh, modeling this structure, yeah. Uh, if we are putting the continuous type of pad coating, uh, yes. what is what is the restraint condition that we can uh, put for the columns? You can say consider it as fixed for both direction, no? Uh, if you have a ground beam, both directions. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Excuse me, sir. But, but you'll have a slightly deep round beam like 800 millimeter, not very shallow. Yeah, even we can model, if we model it as a pin support, sorry, pin restraint one, pin support. Yeah, if you want, you can do that, no problem. But uh, real is, real is, in the real situation, it's fixed. Is there, the foundation is so strong, it doesn't rotate. So what is the support condition? Pin or fixed? It should be fixed. Fixed. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, while designing the beams from the results obtained from E types or SAP 2000, uh, we can't incorporate the pattern loading there. No? What is the best way to optimize? Uh, I, will, I, will not, I will not design beams. By, when I make a 3D model, I will never design beams by using E types results. I always go with, I just do a simple subframe analysis as you are in the course. And then do moment redistribution, and then design the beam for the moment that I like. But I do a trick, and that is called risk assessment. 
I know at the support, the moment can not exceed whatever I calculate from the model, but there can be redistribution of moments that can increase the moment at the span. So when I am designing the span moments, I might design for slightly higher moment. So that I will end up with little more reinforcement or extra reinforcement in the middle part of the beam. In the middle part of the beam, extra reinforcement will be there. So I will not use ELAPS model. I'll just do a simple subframe on SAP 2000. And then apply the loads, pattern loading, and get the waiting moments. They are all approximate because if there's any settlement, all these moments can change. But fortunately, we are using invariant detail foundation, no chance for varying the very little chance of variation of moments. So if, if the moments do not vary, you can easily select the middle span moment and then increase it slightly uh, to allow for what we call risk analysis. The risk analysis is we like to have a slightly higher factor of safety in the span section of the beam. Is that clear? I will try to have a slightly higher factor of safety in the span because if the beam fails, it will fa fail in the span, not at the support. Is that clear? So basically, I will over design the beam at the center. Few reinforcement extra. Sir, can I have a question? Uh, Yes, uh, we'll wind up now almost uh, on time. Uh, time uh, we have enough time, yeah, enough time yeah. in with uh, future presentations. Uh, may I invite uh, our presentation committee chair, subcommittee chair, uh, engineer Kamala Gunavadhan to propose a word of thing. Thank you, Manjula. Manjula. Uh, good evening, everyone. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, coordinator I'm of this uh, knowledge sharing, sharing and, and actually it's a great honor for me to do this uh, uh, word of thanks. Uh, today we have completed the second lecture of uh, medium rice buildings, uh, the head in structural design methodology. Uh, a big thank to you, uh, to your professor. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Professor Dishan, Dishan Jai Singer, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for your yeah, thank you. Thank you. Session. And I hope you have gained, uh, gained something. A uh, new way of thinking about structures rather than yes. just thinking uh, yeah. also, uh, based on yeah. some rules. Some rules. Mm -hmm. Also, I thank the organizing subcommittees, professional and uh, presentation and uh, knowledge sharing of civil engineering sectional committee for this session. I extend also my thanks to the ISL for hosting this and IT teams for your support. Finally, I thank you all our members who participated in this and I hope you extracted the essence of this valuable lecture series. Lecture this evening, design and construction of medium high rise building will be a series of lectures and you need to, participants, you need to register for each session through MIS. So next presentation will be on coming Tuesday. And we will notify the time after rechecking the other main events scheduled at ISL. Thank you, Professor, and thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank good you. Evening. Thank you. Thank you.